so from this fort you can see pretty clearly behind me that's china shaman it's been a while since since i've been there Jinmen is an island in Taiwan with a bit of a difference. It's the closest you can get to mainland China and at some points lies just a few kilometers away. This means that it has often been at the forefront of conflict between Taiwan and China and is a pretty sensitive area. Everywhere you look, there's aspects of army and conflict, either past or present. But the island is so much more than its military. And in recent years, it's opened up to tourism an industry that is now booming there. With mountains and beaches, you can enjoy the incredible nature Jinmen has to offer, the unique architecture that sets it aside from anywhere else in Taiwan, and embrace and learn the culture and history that's unique to this small group of islands. Unlike some of the other outerlying islands in Taiwan, the only way to get to Jinmen from Taiwan is by plane and takes around an hour. From mainland China, it's just a 20 minute ferry journey. To give you an idea on where we're talking about, here's Jinmen and there's China. And way over here is Taiwan. And yet the Jinmen Islands are governed under ROC rule. That's Republic of China, i.e. Taiwan. We'll get into all of that later though. For now, it's time to board the plane and enjoy a sunset from the skies. By the time I land, it's already dark and very cold. This evening, all I do is get settled into my hostel and get ready for some exploring the following day. Hi guys, and welcome to Jinmen. It's my first morning here and I have to say it's very cold very windy I definitely underestimated the um, the cool here so for our first day um, I'm gonna take you around Jincheng it's where I'm staying a little cute hostel just back here um, I'm staying in like the main city center um, and I don't want to travel too far on my scooter uh, because it is very cold and I underestimated the weather so I need to first find a jacket, buy a jacket, and then we can go on some more bigger rides tomorrow. So firstly, I'm going to take you on a little tour around the main thing there is to see around Jincheng area. That is in the day one. Let's get going. Let's go. Jimin's main city is called Jincheng, and I was staying right in the middle of it. It's also close to most of the main attractions on the island, including the bridge, which will take you over to Little Kinmen. See my next video for that. I first head to the north of the island and pass by Tsuhu. Here you can experience some local architecture and stop by the lake not far from Jincheng. 
Stopping by the lake is definitely worth it if you have time or if you just want to escape the city. So this area is gorgeous. It's very peaceful out of the big city. It's actually really, really beautiful and nice, um, but the trail is over two kilometers. So I'm gonna probably save that for a run or something. I've already seen a few birds, which is really nice, but I don't really wanna walk around for two kilometers. So probably save that for tomorrow morning's run. Anyway, this was a nice little lake area and hiking spot. Separating the lake and sea, there's a bridge running across. You absolutely have to stop here for a walk as this is one of the best spots for a view into mainland China, as well as a great spot to check out Jinmen's new bridge. On this beach, you can also experience Taiwan's military defense installations that contrast sharply with the beautiful backdrop. A reminder of the troubled history and still uncertain present Taiwan and especially Jinmen deal with. They can be found throughout the island and help to keep the shoreline safe. If you walk further down the beach, you'll find the Triangle Fortress. Here you can see tanks and go inside the fortress. At the top, there's a cafe, which I guess only operates in summer or on peak times because it was closed when I visited. Next up, if we keep heading north, is the Huxia Fort, providing even more views into China and a closer look at military life there. Despite the fact that it's freaking cold, um, the good thing about visiting Jinmen off peak season is that like there's just no one around there's no one on the roads there's no tourists I feel like I've got the whole place to myself every single place I go this place. after here you can have a look at the Sanyan well in the traditional village area in Beishan On my way to this next stop, I almost drove into a military camp. Definitely not my first time being stopped by the military and also not the last one on this trip. But I did finally make it here and I'm glad because it was a pretty cool sight to take in. The Beijing Broadcasting Wall is definitely not one to miss. These are massive speakers previously used to blast propaganda and music across to mainland China. If you have a wander around the back of it, you might find this random beach area too. Great for summer, but I almost froze my fingers off filming all of this. the reason apart from the fact that I was curious what I would find to be honest haven't found anything apart from the fact that I'm on a beach and there's no one else here and also just up here is a cool little watch house I am not gonna go exploring too much there is a gorgeous looking spot just over there on the beach um, this is Xiamen in the background I'm not gonna go exploring too much because there was just um, a military camp um, like not a tourist one uh that i almost drove into on my way here so i'm not gonna go there but it's a nice little beach and along here 
in the background you can also see these things that are put there for defense as well i think it's really nice to come to places like this in jinmen at least you know for me as well because i'm kind of reminded that jinmen is not just all about its military and its past and stuff like that but it has gorgeous beaches and i'm currently standing on one um that's completely empty it's absolutely gorgeous it is cold it's about 14 degrees um and it's windy but it's it's actually it's sunny it's lovely and i can imagine this being an awesome spot in summer to just come and hang out and this beach feels pretty secretive because i did have to climb down that weird thing to get there so maybe a nice little tip for you guys the next stop I went to was the Gunning Toll Battle Museum. I'd actually recommend coming here before you do all the stuff I just did, as it gives you some good context. Also known as the Battle of Jinmen, this took place during the Civil War in 1949, and you can still see the signs of this battle in Jinmen today. Heading back to Jinteng and before the day ended, I paid a visit to Shuangshi Ba, another fort and this one is very close to the city centre. Zhuguang Tower is also a must visit and again not far from the city. No trip to Jinmen is complete without it, so make sure you do stop here even if just for a few minutes. It was built in 1953 as a memorial for Jinmen's fallen soldiers in the Battle of Gunning Tol, four years earlier. It also has two cannons at the front, dating back to the Qing and Ming dynasties. It's a lovely place to admire the view of the city from the balcony at the top as well as the wonderful architecture of the tower from the inside. There are also sometimes special exhibitions inside. And finally for today, one of my favourite things that I did in Jinmen was the Jenggongyu Islet. So this is a separate island yet again, actually a little one, an islet. It's a very small piece of rock, just a few minutes walk from Jinmen's main island. And this walkway opens up for just one hour a day at low tide. It's an islet that used to be used as a military outpost, and therefore it's just like another fort out there. But since it is its own island, it's pretty unique. If you manage to catch it on low tide, then you are in for some luck. It is only accessible 30 minutes before and 30 minutes after low tide. There's a board up there showing you the monthly recommended times to visit. It's not advised to go later since this walkway will be completely filled with water. In fact, that's what happened to me when I went here, or tried to at least, for the first time. You also want to make sure that you don't get stuck on that island. And there's a massive statue of Kongsha there too. One cool thing here to do is to actually walk around the whole islet. This will just take you about five minutes, but you will end up seeing more things in place for Taiwan's defense system. These have mostly been cut down now, but you do have to watch out. These glass bottles are placed all around the island, and trust me, I nearly lost a hand to these whilst taking some of these videos. And with that, it is goodbye, Jingle Yu. And back to the mainland. Bye bye.